Welcome back to Julia, Among the Stars. Let's continue exploring this station here. See what there is to find. Observation. Every single breathing unit has been removed from the spacesuits. I wonder if it's somehow connected to the bad air in here. Yes. I guess somebody was either using the breathing units or whatever they are, or somebody wanted other people to not be able to use them. This looks like a container used for a backup air generating unit. Affirmative. Further analysis is needed, though. Hmm. Why would they have to use a backup air generator? I am not sure what to do with that container right now. Leave it there for the time being. Well, I do need to purify the air, apparently, at least according to my log. And this looks like the things outside of the ship, so I think I know what to do with it, but, uh... I'll wait for them to catch up. Not again. Is this Xenophon all over again? I don't think so. What we have found here does not support that theory. You're right. It looks as though they were defending the station. Covered with fingerprints. Correlation of these prints with the internal database reveals a prevailing match with Steven Prins. This, this weapon has never been fired. Hmm. Died before they had a chance to, maybe? Wait, I thought I couldn't go inside of here. Wait, why do I need to clean the air? I just realized I don't remember why I need to even clean it. I mean, Mobot is the one going inside of here, right? So... Does the air even matter? I'm sure it said before, I just don't remember the reason. Huh. Anyway. Alright. Yes! Data pads! Awesome, it's been a long time since I've seen one. Long, long time. It's all the way back on Xenophon. Hmm. Someone took a lot of trouble to take out the flooring to get that pipe. But why? Did they need more air in here? This crowbar has been used to tear up the floor. Oh, I can't pick it up? I'm actually really surprised. An adventure game, a point-and-click adventure game nonetheless, where you can't pick up a crowbar. I don't know if that's ever been done before. I think they're breaking new ground. I haven't seen one of these for ages. My father had one, and taught me how to solve it pretty quickly. Judging from here, it looks like sketches for a big antenna. Confirmation. It looks like a simplified construction plan to build one. Oh yeah, I still have the hack thing. Ooh. Protected by strong cryptography. Never mind. Impossible to hack. Okay, Oh, hold on a second. Nothing is impossible to hack. Extremely hard to hack to the point of being impractical, sure, but impossible? No. If a human being can enter the password, you can hack it. Hollow unit. It was once used to visualize acquired samples, but it's in bad shape now. Oh, I was thinking like holodeck. That's quite a bit less exciting. Empty. Estimation. There is nothing. Yes, thank you. Okay, I don't have any key cards to get into any of those places except for here. Oh, okay, so this time's the this time the men's sleeping quarters is the one that's messed up and I can actually go into the women's. Somebody's been in the maintenance shaft. Observation. The presumed explosion in the adjacent room has shaken the whole station. This piece probably fell down because of that explosion. 
Someone tried to manipulate the air circuits in the shaft as well. Was their supply of breathable air depleted? Hmm. Empty. What the heck? Oh, oxygen tanks. Yeah, I wonder if they were trying to make the inside of the station... Uh, toxic to the creature, perhaps, so that it would kill it. Assuming the creature is small enough to actually fit inside, which uh, it seems like it's too big for that. But it almost seems like they were trying to do that. They're trying to make the air toxic and then just survive with their own their own oxygen. These diagrams represent the central air and electrical circuits. Look, someone marked all the places where the air pipes were accessible. Unfortunately, it's broken beyond repair. Yes, our totally uncomfortable shoes. I wish they at least looked nice. Ah, ID card. Let's get that card. Someone has removed all the oxygen tanks from the spacesuits. They must have had a really serious air problem. This fallen cover supports my theory. There was a small explosion somewhere in the station. Wow, it's Clive Christian. Special reserve. I couldn't even afford one bottle. Do you want me to recover those bottles for you? Hmm, not really. It wouldn't feel right. And besides, there's no one to share it with. <laughs> Using 60-year-old cosmetics. It's sad to see how quickly personal belongings can turn to junk without their owners. No hidden cameras. The level of trust here was significantly higher than on Xenophone. Alright. Let's go take a look at that keycard. Unless there's something I've missed. Closed, closed, nope, nope. Oh wait, blueprint. Aha, someone was studying how to remove the oxygen tanks from the spacesuits. All right, let's go use this key card on the computer. Marita Robinson. Image data corrupted. Hmm. Medical. Stephen Prince. I have a theory, but I don't want to alert anyone just yet. Drop by any time. I still think it's just your nerves. Yeah, it might be possible. Have you seen it? Not really. It was too dark. It's gonna eat us all alive. Calm down. If anything happens to me, I've made some observations, and they're in my locker. The code is... I'm not even gonna try to remember that right now. From Roger Callan... Mags, can I visit you, please? Sure. What's up? I'm feeling very odd. Do you think someone's body can react to infrasound by having visions? You know what? Just get in here and tell me what's wrong. Face to face. Do you think someone's body can react to infrasound by having visions? Um... Actually, I think you can... I'm pretty sure I actually remember hearing about that. It's something about a certain frequency of sound waves causing... Causing something... I don't know if it's like reverberation in the... The eye or something, but I remember it causing... Visual... Problems. Hmm. Benjamin Walter. Benjamin, don't forget to come... Come here for your vaccine. Oh, sorry about that. We'll be there in a second. Now that's a good boy. Okay, please tell me they don't just have pictures of rocks. Okay, one picture of rocks, that's acceptable. Now they just have pictures of sand. And it looks like the goop that I found throughout this place. Most likely left by the creature. I think. I 
Let's go take a look at that locker. Nine eight seven six five four. Oh, never mind. There's only one. Oh, wait, I can't type it. Oh, now I now I can. Okay. Nine eight seven six five four. I guess I have to click in the field or something. Okay. Does this one work? Yes. Alright. Alright, there's a T. T I. Hmm. Oh, damn it. I still have no idea what it is. I'm assuming that's somebody's name. Bagtastic? Nagtastic? Magtastic? Magtastic, okay. Alright. How could your hold on, before I start before I start even reading this. How is her image data corrupted? This seems a bit strange, not to mention the fact that her if you notice when I picked up the ID card, the ID card had like a smear of dirt over her picture. So not only is her picture on the ID card covered, but her image data is corrupted in the database. That is extremely suspicious. That is very strange. Alright. Oh, uh, alright. <laughs> I was just saying alright on my own, but that's actually the first word of this log. This will be quite a nightmare calming down this sorry bunch. I'm afraid I'm going to run out of tranquilizer soon. On the other hand, Phaedros sounds like a place where nothing can go wrong. We really need it after our visits to Ambrosia and Zenobia. <laughs> nothing can go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling that we're in a perfect place. Nothing to do, no unusual activities, and just a view of an endless calm desert. I bet this will do marvels for their sanity. I am bored, though. This place has something to it. I just can't quite figure out what that something is. I might have spoken too soon. Roger came to me this morning, complaining about some weird sounds deep in the night. Me? I haven't heard a thing. Still, it worries me because he was really obsessive about it. The last thing I need is someone going berserk. Thank goodness for Cassie. Even though she's so quiet, almost withdrawn. She doesn't even write in her data pad. But she's always so stable and calm. Sometimes personality is overrated. I gave Roger sedatives. He doesn't seem to be mentally stable, and there are laser guns lying around. I've decided to put him under close medical surveillance. He's probably on the verge of a real mental breakdown. The probe stopped answering. Was that a setup? After he made all the information on the Zenobia expedition classified, I don't trust Lark one bit. He's somehow too shady. And there's more bad news. Unless Benjamin fixes the data channel. We're stuck here. I hope the probe didn't take off without us, but Lark is capable of anything. They showed me the green jelly. I fear we're, we're dealing with something really nasty, something which goes way over our heads. Benjamin told me today that he had no luck restoring communications and doesn't see any solutions to this puzzle. What does he need? A walkthrough? <coughs> Fourth wall. <coughs> Whatever that thing is outside, it's alive, big, and hungry, and we are definitely stuck in here. Did it know that damaging the internal air generators would force us to go outside? I'm scared. Stefan was badly injured, 
I don't think he's going to make it. It's so weird. It doesn't seem to want to eat us. It just somehow wishes us dead. Territorial issues? We have suffered another massive attack on our station. I don't think we, or the station, will survive much longer. Stefan gave me the code to his datapad in case we could find something useful there. It's blah blah blah. I don't think we will need it, though he mentioned some plans for the external air unit. I think I found a way. I will try tonight. If this works, we can save ourselves. Yeah. I don't think it worked. Okay, hold on. There's some weird stuff going on here. Where was it? Uh, yeah, the probe stopped answering. Okay, so this is <laughs> this is starting to become a frequent thing. The probed, the, the probed, the probe seems to be seems to have had many many problems. But I mean, let's see. Was Lark on the ground, though, for this one? Like, was he actually here? Was everybody here? If the entire expedition was down here, then obviously some of them escaped, right? Hmm. And about the probe stopping to uh, respond, not responding anymore, talking about is that a setup? Because of the whole... Zenobi expedition going to hell and that being classified. Like, maybe she was suspecting that Lark was trying to shut them up by leaving them there? Or something? Which makes it sound like he's not on the ground. He's not there with him. But, uh, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I mean, Lark was definitely pretty shady, but I think Julia is even more shady. Alright, let's go take a look at this datapad. Yeah, this is more my thing. This is way more interesting to me than the stuff that was happening previously. Way more interesting. This is back to the reason I like this game in the first place. Freed91023. Actually, I don't know if that's his datapad. Well, let's try it. That's not his datapad, is it? Yeah, whose was that supposed to be? No, it's Stefan's. And that's Roger Kellen's. Over here. So, never mind. That is Stefan, right? Not Steven? I almost pronounced it Steven to begin with, but that's an A. I think it's Stefan. Or Stephen. It's probably Stefan. <laughs> It's probably Stefan. Um, oh yeah, I could just use the key card to uh, get into these places. Maybe. Depends on whether it actually works for all of these, does it? Yes, it does. Excellent. Oh god, what was that? Uh-oh. It's a mutilated skeleton. I can tell it's mutilated because the text says mutilated skeleton. Okay, before I do this stuff, though, I... Um... Where was the air unit? The air unit is actually on the datapad, right? Like the information about what he wanted to do with it? Stefan? Yeah, okay. Alright, what happened here? Just look at this, Julia. The damage to the bones is quite peculiar. Parts are actually missing. What is your take on it? If it wasn't utter nonsense, I would think the leg was chewed on. May I suggest a possible act of cannibalism? I don't think so. Let's look around some more. That seems very implausible. An ordinary microscope. It's obvious that the main technology focus was elsewhere. Just standard medical junk. These are expired anyway. Medical tools are scattered across the floor. Do you want me to clean up in here? No, there's no point in that. The abandoned surgical room has been kept clean. I suppose it would be... I'm not sure if 
I could say hermetically sealed. In fact, I'm not even sure what that means, but it certainly would be very well sealed. Since if it wasn't, people would become horribly infected. <sighs> you didn't expect to find anyone alive in here, did you? No. It's just, all of them were once alive. There's nothing you can do about them now, Rachel. I know. Have you found anything interesting? Not really. This corpse is already way beyond recognition. The door is broken beyond repair. Oh, I didn't even see the data pad down there. Wait, that's a door? Hello. Another container. I am not sure. Leave okay, it there. Okay. Oh, a little memory card. Come here. What are you? Four terabyte. Four tibs. What is inside of the tibs? Is the creature going to pop up? Memory card contains one video file. Further analysis is impossible. Hold on, I want to see that thing again. Okay. <laughs> Can I not view it again? Uh, okay. I hope everybody remember that video and it's seared into your retinas and your brain and you never forget it because you can never watch it again. It's definitely large. It's not quite as large as I thought it was, though. Um, I, I don't think its full body could fit inside, but I suppose its head could probably fit inside of this place. But there's no way the full body could. No way. It's just too big for that. It couldn't fit through the doors. Stephen Prince. It's still not the right one. Can I hack you? Nope. more of these containers. Obviously someone has been trying to interrupt the station power supply. The scattered documents are the station's electrical wiring schematic. Yeah, so they're obviously messing with the air. All of these air units, they took the air units out of the suits. They had all sorts of schematics of the wiring and whatnot. Which is probably related to the idea that, um, what was her name? Whatever her name was, mentioned in her databat. She says she had one idea that she thinks will work, and that was the last entry. This is most likely the idea. The ladder once led to the space shuttle. Is it still accessible? Unfortunately not. The entrance has been blocked by the explosion. Observation. The power has been manually interrupted. Probably a safety measure to prevent further explosions. Oh, need the password for this one. I am unable. This screen once showed vital station information. Now it's useless. Well, this body's certainly in better condition than the other one. That body! Look at his hands! They're tightly clenched! Do you think he died of asphyxiation, Julia? It looks more like shock. We need to examine the body to find out more. Observation. He has an ID card in his pocket. I am recovering it now. Hmm. Now this one looks different. Yeah, it's a maintenance card. Alright, who were you? What the hell did he see out there? The posture of the corpse indicates that the cause of death was a heart attack, probably caused by the shock of an extremely disturbing sight. The body was pressed against the window before it collapsed to the ground. 
Benjamin Walter. Commentary. The electricity wiring is in very bad condition. Whatever it was, it shook the station badly. Commentary. The outside view is pretty boring. Yes, thank oh, you for robot. that. robot. You almost seem romantic. Clarification. Unlike you, my unit isn't equipped with emotional AI. I don't know what it is, but I've got a bad feeling about this place. Are you superstitious, Rachel? Not a bit. Just something feels so wrong. The environment. Everything. It simply doesn't make sense with what we see in here. Something disturbs you and you can't put your finger on it. Something. You can't put your finger on it. Let me let me posit a couple things. I think there's I feel like there's multiple things that could be causing her discomfort. One is that we heard a story about the gigantic monster Zir trying to eat Ith on some desert planet, which is quite obviously this planet. Um, we're visiting people that she used to know 60 years ago, but they've all horribly died. Uh, we saw a video recording of a, a huge monster coming up out of the sand. We found goo, horrible goo, that does probably nasty stuff. But, you know, I mean, other than that, like, other than that stuff, I, I don't know what would make her uncomfortable. I can't imagine. This window has been broken from the outside. That is interesting, considering the extreme strength of the material. Right, just a few grains of sand and bam, the window is broken. Rotten junk food leftovers. More of this stuff. My kingdom for a steak. These diagrams represent... Mm-hmm. Rocks. Yay. Now look at this. It looks like another upgrade. Ooh. Let me analyze the schematics. What is that? I think that this upgrade enhances Mobot's audio capabilities. Really? What will he be able to do now? One part is obviously a much more sensitive microphone while the rest deals with signal processing. Useful. Yeah, that's got to be used for this place here. On Phaedros, because... The logs mention something about sound and the one guy complaining about, or not complaining, but saying like an infrasound cause you to have visions and stuff like that. Talking about hearing noises. Oh, station controls. Incorrect air composition detected. <laughs> Please refer to operation manual, page 7217. Okay then. Lost, lost, lost. Okay, can't do anything. Food porn. <laughs> what? I'm just gonna pretend that didn't happen. Benjamin Walter, okay. I still haven't found the damn data pad for Stefan. Doesn't matter which computer I use, does it? No, nah, it's not gonna matter. Whoops. Actually, I think I am done here. Oh wait, well, I didn't try this. Ah, <sighs> nope. Caution. I am detecting a strange phenomenon. Just what the hell is that? I am not sure I want to know. My scanners don't show anything, though. That's because we have a major super sensitive audio thing. It's okay, Mobot. If anyone dies, it's gonna be you. Hmm. 
I've been both ways, right? Yeah, that's a sick bay. There's that. That's that. This is there. There is that. This is there, that, that, this there. Alright, I don't know if I wanna I don't know if I wanna go outside. I might want to just take off instantly, but let's go see. Hello. Can I do anything with uh, this yet? I am not sure what let's leave them. <sighs> I need to find his data bad first. It's Devon. Apparently he's the dude with the plans for this stuff. I must have missed his data bad, right? I mean if it's not if I haven't seen it so far, then where the hell would it be? Someone has removed the visor, but why? Standard security measures. We could have our spacesuit scanned for faulty parts in here. I bet it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, that is not Stefan. I can't hack it. Oh no, yeah. That is Stefan's. Alright, I thought I missed it. I saw Prins, but I didn't see Stefan. Alright. Uh, Freed 9 something something. Find one 023. Alright, what have you been up to? Research department. Stefan, Stefan Prins reporting. I've decided to keep my data pad updated to keep my thoughts consistent. After what we did on Ambrosia, it's much harder for me to stay focused. We were never really ready for alien contact. We're scientists, not some bloody army bots. Yet we all acted like complete idiots. I wonder if Yamabushi would have rushed this mission if it hadn't been for Jason Quincy Sperber. What kind of a name is that? Jason Quincy Sperber. He must be worth trillions considering how many Yamabushi projects he has personally backed. I heard he insisted this expedition take off in months, not years. I guess whatever Sperber wants, he gets. What a disaster. Lark decided to split us up and only send the most stable crew members here while he stayed behind to supervise the crew left on the probe. Only five of us made the cut. Although I wondered how Cassie was chosen. She rarely speaks to anyone, just focuses on her analysis. The rest are recovering on the probe. Okay, so yeah, most of them were back on the probe, including Lark himself. So, it sounds like they did leave them. Lark and the rest left them. I mean, Lark, of course, could have just lied to the rest and... Well, I mean, he could have... He could have caused this to happen, but, I mean, how would he justify this to the rest of the people on the probe? Obviously, they would know if the probe took off to another planet, leaving behind the rest of the crew members, right? I mean, five of their freaking crew members were sent down. Hmm. I don't know. Nothing but soothing sand in this endless desert. We've recovered slowly from our stress, and we're just now starting to scout the surface. Sometimes I think that soon there won't be anything left to explore here on Phaedros. And then I pause and ask, what would Juanita Durkin do? She was my favorite research advisor at the Academy, and she was so enthusiastic about this mission. And she never found a limit to her curiosity and search for the unknown. So I'll keep looking, Juanita. Looks like this place might actually hide a secret. Last night, we heard strange sounds coming from the desert. I immediately contacted the probe to ask if there were any signs of life, but the answer was negative. I wonder if it might be local acoustic phenomenon. Time to do some science. Um... Stefan? I know you're in the research department and you're not like an English major, but I'm pretty sure you meant that to be plural, right? That should be local acoustic phenomena? Because if phenomenon is singular, right? And you didn't say a local acoustic phenomenon, you said local acoustic phenomenon. Hmm. Hmm. It's okay, I forgive you. 
Oh yeah, and by the way, Julia is obviously lying. Again. She lied about the radiation before. I mean, of course, maybe she didn't lie, you know. Maybe it was a messed up sensor, but I don't think so. To happen twice like this? You know, they searched the planet and scanned it for anything dangerous and it had radiation, and this time they scanned for any life, and Julia said, no, no life. Absolutely negative. Which is obviously complete bullshit, so, yeah. Today the sound is back. Marita swears it must have originated from an organic life form, but all the readings from the probe are negative. Apparently it's just us, and the sand. Still, it creeps me out. Roger went berserk. He rushed in from the desert, screaming that something tried to eat him alive. He didn't even have a scratch on him. I think this place is messing with our minds, and surely we're all pretty shaken after what happened on Ambrosia. That strange sound returned tonight, and seems louder and closer than before. Benjamin found out that the sound always returns at the same time every day. He set up an external microphone and wrote a program which detects sharp amplitude changes. Clever. We can set a trap to see what's behind this scary sound. Something happened tonight. I was woken up by a heavy pounding. It was as if someone hammered nails right into my brain. Everyone was on their feet stumbling around, trying to find out what the heck was going on. Before we were able to get outside, it stopped. Next morning, we went outside to find a strange greenish substance all around the station. I've tried to analyze it, but the station was clueless. I wish Rachel was here. She was so good with this kind of stuff. We've tried to send some samples to the probe, but our communication was damaged, probably because of what hit the station last night. Benjamin is trying to find out what's going on. I have a feeling that we should leave this place ASAP. To make things worse, I have a feeling that Roger is slowly going nuts. At least that will be interesting. The pounding returned tonight, to make and to make matters worse, our main air generator is toast. So from now on, we have to manually replace the external air unit. Time to retreat, I would say. Though we can't do that unless the contact with the probe is back online. We also need to take turns replacing the outside containers. I mustn't forget RTLNOG. Oh joy. Should we draw straws before we go outside? Oh, what the, f the hell does that mean? I mustn't forget RTLNOG. Uh... Obviously something to do with the containers. I'm guessing that's some sort of instruction step thing. RTL, right turn, left. Uh, I don't know. This might actually be useful. Let's try creating normal air conditions in here. It got her. Cassie was walking just outside the window with the containers when this thing emerged from the sand and bit her in two. God help us. I can still hear her screams. We're all going to die here. I was ordered to set the correct levels for the air generator. A tricky business, but I figured it out eventually. Important numbers to remember are 20.9% and 1.1%, of course. It is, it is only air after all. Also, I had to crank up the fans to maximum and then lower them immediately to right at the midpoint to expel the bad air inside. Oh god, today's my container day, wish me luck. Last entry. Well then... Good luck. <laughs> Alright, what popped up here? Yeah, it's connected with a container placement. Weird old nog. Okay, so now can I do the container stuff? That looks like a con Uh huh. Okay, now I can. Cool. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm on container duty. And <laughs> I just heard a noise. Okay. Rurlnog. Should help me. This slot is to ins- Yes, I know what it's for. Thank you. This- Yes, thank you. Could I not, like, put them in? This slot- Uh. Okay. Cool. That was productive. Can I, like, do something with this now? No. I probably need to put the things in before I can actually set the air. Because at the moment I guess I don't have control over it because I don't have the modules in place. Well, I also need to make the acoustic upgrade thing for Mobot. Well, I think I'm going to do that in the next episode. So yeah, this is actually, this is a lot more interesting than it was before. Yeah, this is the sort of stuff I like this game for. This is what I like so much about it in the first place. So, once again, I am enjoying Julia. Which is very nice. I was really worried I was going to just... I mean, if it kept up what it was doing before, for a couple more hours, I probably would have just stopped playing completely. Which would have made me very sad. But no, it looks like it's back in good form. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.